Okay, so we want to evaluate this expression. 4x equals negative 3. So we're going to plug negative 3 in for x. Remember, my recommendation is that you replace every x with empty parentheses. And then you plug that number right into the parentheses. Okay. So then in particular, we avoid the most common mistake, which is mistakes involving negatives. Negative is supposed to be multiplied by a negative, we make sure we catch that. If a negative is supposed to be raised to a power, we make sure we catch that as well. Yeah. Exponents first, right? So we're supposed to multiply something by itself, or are we supposed to multiply by itself three times? Three. Negative three. Negative three. Yeah, very important. Negative three times itself three times. You don't have to write this, of course, but. Uh, how about minus negative three? What's that? Plus. Plus. What's negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Negative 27. We get a positive here, and then times a negative, and a negative. And then we have a negative here, so we do end up pulled together with a plus 27 there. Well, this is minus negative 27, so it's plus 27. Can you make the parenthesis and the two, um, the subtraction looking signs, a plus sign? Yeah, that's how we In here? Yeah. Uh, well, sure, I mean, however you show that that's positive is up to you. It's not, like, a mathematical thing. It's, it's not, you know what I'm saying? If I'm doing my work, I know that a negative times a negative is a positive, and I, I do go ahead and write that so that I know that that's what I'm having. How you write it, it doesn't matter. As long as we get there. Yeah. Um, on the quiz, do we grade it with one through five? Zero through five. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Simplify the following expression. How else could I give you instructions? Like, how? What's another way of explaining what I want you to do here? What different words could I use? Is that? Like light terms. Like light terms. Yeah, that's something that you said before. Like terms. What constitutes a like term? Like, what's a like term with negative five x squared? Two x squared. How? Why are they like terms? Five x squared. Seven x squared. Yes. Okay, Jenna. Um, they both share x squared. They both have x squared, okay? This is a, a rule that we can follow, but why why can't I add 2x squared plus 2x besides the fact that they don't have the same exponent? So what? What does that mean? Why can't I add them together? They're not multiplying. They're not multiplying? I, do you mean like if I were to multiply these together, I could multiply them together? Yeah. Okay. Here, let's talk about this. Sometimes I don't ask questions very well. x squared plus x. You might think that you could make this x cubed, right? Because I see this a lot. 2x squared plus 5x equals 7x cubed. I mean, no part of this makes any sense, but I see it a lot. Okay. 5 plus 7 is, or 5 plus 2 does equal 7, and, and I guess there's a, there's a 2 here and a 1 there, and we just think there's a 3. At the crux of this, though, is that we're trying to put x squared plus x is x cubed. If we know that that doesn't make any sense, we're not going to try to put 2x squared and 5x. So let's look at the simpler x squared plus x. Why is that not? I mean, mathematically, why is it not equal to x cubed? Uh, not multiplying. These two are, are not multiplied. Exactly, right? This is uh, x times x and, and another x with multiplication, like you're saying. But though over here, it's x times x plus x, right? So if we think that x squared plus x is x cubed, what we're kind of doing is magically changing the plus into multiplication. All right, so whenever, multi whenever add x squared plus x and get x cubed, they're taking addition and just turning it into multiplication. But you can use that answer right though? That answer, what, what that answer? x squared plus x equals x cubed, is that right? No. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, it's not right. Did you 
still think it was right? Yeah. Well, so what I have below that, is this right? Like, are these two things equal? Yeah. This and this are equal to each other? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, those are not. But these are just the long way to write what we have up here. x cubed is three x's times each other, yeah? Mm -hmm. And x squared is two x's times each other. Yeah. And x is just x, <coughs> and we're adding it together, right? right? So on this side, we have x times x plus x. That's what x squared plus x is. And on here, we have x times x times x. That's what x cubed is. Uh, okay. So this shows that this couldn't be correct. Okay. Okay? Yep. Pretty important. You don't want to make this mistake. It's a pretty uh, simple, cheap mistake to, uh, to not make, right? It doesn't take a whole lot to not make that mistake. Okay. But we can see, oh, if I did have an x squared plus an x squared, that is 2 times x squared. That is 2 of the x squareds. Just like an apple plus an apple would be 2 times apple. Yep. Because there's no imaginary one before the Right? And this is the same kind of thing? Right. Remember how we talked about Did we talk about this? If this length is x, what x squared looks like? Yeah. What does x squared look like if this is x? Double, Double that. That would be actually 2x. Oh, right? you do box. A square. Yeah. I guess because box is, is something we also will draw, and that's three dimensions. Yeah, a square. That's x by x has an area of x squared, way different things. But if I have an x squared and another x squared, I have two of them, two times those that x squared. And x cubed would be like a box. What am I trying to tell you here? That x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, way, way different. You can't add them together. OK? So now I have 2x squared and negative 5x squared are like terms. 2x doesn't have any like terms, 4 doesn't have any like terms. 2x squared plus 2x plus 4. Wait, yeah. you have to write it a certain way and it's supposed to be 4? In a certain four. order, no. Oh, it could be 4 minus 3x squared plus 2x. Okay. It could be in any order. Yeah, she, I think yeah, she, she did she make she us. Did. Don't make us, though. She made, she made us do like the, the, the highest power first. And then the 2x. And, and then you get half the foot wrong. Actually, it's not like descending. Uh, the semi like order of powers. Yeah. 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 I really like that. You don't have to do that. No, no, I like so it. That's like, uh, I mean, it's, it's just. It's not yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that's wrong. It's not wrong. It's not incorrect. It's, it is worth the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? So, there are just very few occasions where I'll, where I'll mark you wrong for having a value that's the same. Like if I say, Give the answer as a fraction, and it's one half, and you give me 0.5. It's true that one half is equal to 0.5, but I ask for a fraction, right? Yes. So those kinds of things. Right. Unless I specify, if your answer is equal to this, the correct answer, then it's correct. I'm going to simplify the following. Right. I think we'll all agree that we distribute the three. Right? Okay. Right. Okay. Having trouble with that, I, I imagine, or very few are having trouble with that, maybe. The thing that you might have trouble here is you might try and take like this stuff and, and then this stuff and then multiply it all together. I see that happen a lot. But here's the deal. We're adding, right? and really this, this minus sign is minus this stuff over here. So it's minus, or it was plus the negative. It's not anything like multiply. You're not multiplying anything together here between these two groups. So we're going to add. We can just put addition right there, right away. We're going to add whatever it is we get here. So how do we get whatever it is we're supposed to get over here? Uh, 9x times x plus 9x times 1. 9x or something slightly different than 9x? Negative. Yeah, negative. Yeah, negative 9x. I'm sure that's what you meant. I'm sure that. So 9x squared and then minus 9x. Make sure that negative does make it over to the second term. And then we collect like terms. I do I write it the standard way, send it uh, order of n powers. Uh, so negative nine x squared minus uh, six x plus twelve. Okay. Complete the table. 
Now, we have all of the tools that we need to complete this table. We have evaluated expressions for given values of x. We have dealt with negatives. We've dealt with squaring negatives, squaring x's. We have everything that we need. What we're doing here is we're evaluating this expression five times for five different numbers, five different inputs. <laughs> Hello? All right, so like I said, we are. It sounds like you want this to take longer than it needs to. Uh, we're going to evaluate this expression five different times. Five different times. For five different inputs. We talked about functions, right? We talked about how a function is a very simple thing. You put something in, you get something out. We talked about that, right? We talked about vending machines. Yeah. All right, okay, so you put something in, you get something out. It's that simple. It doesn't have to get any more complicated than that. Put something in, you get something out. So we're going to put in negative 2. If you want to put negative 2 in, Mikhail, on the quiz? Yeah. If we're going to put something in, let's make sure that we, whether we write down the parentheses or we can imagine the parentheses in our minds, if we have to write the work down or if we can do it in our, in our heads, we need those parentheses to be there, whether implied or literally there, so that we don't mess stuff up, especially with negatives. So what is this going to come out to be? This right here, this, just this first part. Negative. Kind of? Four. Four. Negative four? No. Four. No. Positive four. Negative two, Titan. Negative two is positive four. Minus four. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Minus 1, so that's negative 1. Negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 1. That's 1. Minus 2 minus 1. Negative 2. Uh, 0. Can you do that quickly without much work? 0. Negative 1. Negative 1. This part is 0, and now we get negative 1. One, a positive one, that's easy, because that's just to make this one, that's one times two, that's two, so one plus two is three, minus one is two. One more, positive two, that's two squared, plus two times two, minus one, four, plus four, minus one, seven. Seven. Am I wrong or something? No, that's right. Two squared is four. Two times two is four. Eight. And then minus one is seven. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Uh, four plus four, though? It is. This is four. Plus four. Minus one. Eight. Minus oh, one. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Yep. What was the final answer? Number three. Can we go back? That. Negative nine x squared minus six x plus. Yeah. Yes. So do you have the answer in all the answers? Oh, okay. You still got it right anyway. Yeah. Negative. I just say, hey, it's okay. Yeah. 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 So let's write a really simple function. I want you to uh, plug in some inputs and get out some outputs. And we'll just take it from there. Okay, so we're going to go with uh, 2x minus 5. I just, you choose. Choose 4. Four different things to plug in for x, which will give you, each of them will give you an output, right? And uh, just keep track of those inputs and outputs. That's it. Make it like easy as I walk past your desk to see, oh, this person put in this number for x and got this number out for y. And then I can see all four of those pairs. However you want to show me that, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's start with a specific example. What's something that someone plugged in for x? Drew. One. One. 
So y equals 3 times 1 minus 5, and we got negative 2, right? Now, right, it's not too difficult to tell what went in and what came out, but I want to organize it better. How do I organize this better? Uh, an xy chart. xy chart. We've all seen these, right? Probably we've all seen these. So here, x was 1, and y is negative 2. Jen? Can I say another? Yeah. 17,263. No. 17,263. Tell me you did. You got out? We do that one. But you get no. Out. I just wanted to see if they did that. Um, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm intrigued now. Yeah. I'm asking a number that actually someone put into the question. Oh, I'll put that in. Oh, we can, somebody can come back, Shane. 42. You put in 42. What do you got? Uh, oh, I didn't answer that. Oops. You didn't do it? I put two. I did. And then that I got out one. Okay, Dimitri. Oh. So the answer to the second one was 51,784. Okay. Dude, that's a big number. My answer is 121. 21? 121. 121. Okay. Because why did you do such hard numbers? I did four. Because why? What did you get out? Uh, I got seven. Seven. Oh. Yeah. Again, this is starting to sound like a group of people well, that wants this to take a long time. I was like, guys, we don't want to take a long time. Yo. Judy got one more? I got six. I put in six and I got four. Put in six, got out four. All right. So, that's all this function is for. To put things in and get things out. How many things can we put into this function? A lot. How many? One. Infinity. Oh, infinity. You can put it in, well, one at a time, right? But there's infinity possibilities with things that you can put in. Dimitri and Jason. I'm sure it's Dimitri. What are you looking at? It shouldn't take long at all. But it will take long, because I will emphasize it as much as I need to emphasize it. So, we can show this input-output information any way we want. I saw some had like x equals 1, y equals negative 2, just close to each other, so that I can see 1 went in and negative 2 came out. Uh, or you could represent it like this, right? That's a pretty standard way of doing it as well. It's called an ordered pair. We just, we just understand the first one is x and the second one is y. That's why we call it an ordered pair. Uh, any way we want, any way that communicates that information, all right? So, as we talk about graphs, realize that's all a graph is. It's just keeping track of inputs and outputs. But it takes up a lot less space than the number one and then the number negative two. Because on a graph, you can represent that information with what? How do I represent that one went into the function and negative two came out of the function on the graph? Drew? We put a one on the x line. Okay, so we'll just make some marks here on the x. Positive one. And you so make a dot. Right there. Yeah, and then you make a dot. You make a dot right here. Uh-huh. No, no, no. And then you go up or er, down negative oh, two. So you don't put a put, put okay, no. so then you go down two. Okay, so I I put in one, right? Mm -hmm. That's the going over to x is one. And then I come down to negative two, yeah. and a, just a tiny, tiny dot represents this. Right. It's, it's kind of the rationale behind a graph. Is <laughs> it's a lot less space to keep track of all these inputs and outputs. This input gives this output. And you can track just a ton, literally an infinite number, even in this space, right? Because it covers all the decimals and the fractions as well, or it will. Huh. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wow, that's a lot of things. That's Why are we asking right there? Here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm throw this to you. I'll fill that out. I'll explain it later, but we want to do this fast, right? Okay. <laughs> so, one, negative two. How about uh, four, seven? Four, seven. So, one, two, three, four, that's the input. That's the x. That's what goes in. And then 7 is represented in the vertical direction. So 1, 2, 3. This is not a degree. Erase that. Sorry. That's 
One, two, three, four, seven. That's it right there. All right, got two so far. I can go to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six. Goes to four. No, it's supposed to be the other way around. I put in four, but I got six. Oh, well, that's S somehow. Somehow. Does that seem right? Cause okay, I put in three and got four for a different one. Put in three and got out four. Yep. That's right. Do you notice how we two different fours were put in? They're not different. Four is four, right? And one person got seven, one person got six. So what should it be? Seven. 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 Oh, I think I did four. Yeah, I did seven. Put in four, get out seven. Okay, let's do three. And one, two, three, four. All right? Now, at this point, you might want to, like you're tempted maybe to draw the line. Okay, but I, what I want you to understand is what Jason just said. And that is, it's just going to be covered in dots, all right? Just a bunch of dots. It is not actually a line, okay? The line is a bunch of dots, right? That's I like what it, is. it. I like it. And whatever graph you get, whatever shape it is, it is just a bunch of dots, all right? Now, what's that? Even a bar graph? That's a different kind of graph. This is a graph of a function. A pie graph is a graph of like, some data. So that's okay. different. That's a good question. That is a kind of a graph. Graph is a word that means a picture. Right? Wow. So the graph of a function is a picture of a function. And what is a function but an input-output machine? You put something in, you get something out. And that's what the graph is a picture of, what you, what you get out when you put something in, a particular value. Okay? So I start to plot more points, more and more and more and more and more points. And what shape does this start to look like? A line. In this case, it looks like a line. It starts to look more and more like a line. Okay. If you were to plot, let's see if we put in two. If we put in two, what do we get out? It's like one, right? If we put in two, you get out one. Yeah. Two, you get out one. We've done one. We've done two. We've done three. We've done four. How about uh, zero? What do you get do when you plug in zero? Negative five. Negative five. So two, three, four, five. I put in zero for x, I get out negative five for y. What if we get put negative one in there? What do we get? Oh, last year. Negative eight. Zoom tight. Okay. What if I told you now that we have all these points here? What if I told you that when you plug in a half, you get out three? Would you believe it? Yeah. Why would it? It doesn't fall in this pattern. Okay? Now, you may know that this graph, the graph of this function, is going to be a line in your right. But if you knew absolutely nothing about this function and what its graph is supposed to look like, if I told you that you indeed do get three out of this function when you put in a half, and I assured you, if you check the work, you'll get three. I'm lying right now. If I assured you that you would get three, and somehow you did, and it just it didn't fit this shape, maybe it's a weird function that it just does that. Right? But it's not what I would expect. And that's what really a graph is about. It's about what will I expect to get out of this function. I would expect if I was going to put in a half, I'd get something down in this region, not up here. Right? Yeah. Now, it turns out in that case that what we expect is correct, and we would get something straight in between these two points, okay? Not up here. We don't, in this case, get something up there. So a graph is all about what do we think is going to happen. And when we draw that line, when we do that final step of drawing that line, that's what we're saying. We're saying all of those points, all of those points that this thing is covered in, it's going to make this shape when I'm done plotting them all. When would you be done plotting all of the points? All of the points of the graph. Never. Because how many points are there? Infinite. Oh, that's good. Okay. Because it will never be done. Infinite. Oh, no, that's okay. 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 I saw you come in with eggs the other day. And I was <coughs> you were having an Easter egg hunt early. <coughs> 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 
Okay, so in this case, all of the points that show the input and output pairs for this function, when we plot them all, you know, pretend to plot them all because we can never be done with that, they will eventually make this line. We plot every point and every point in between those points and every point in between those points too. We'll get a line. Okay. So that's the big payoff here. We understand that the shapes are just a bunch, infinite number of dots. Okay. So if you were plotting them, do you have to put a line through? If I say draw the graph of this function? Yeah, do you have to put a line through? Yes. Okay. Because if I draw the graph of this function, I'm going to draw all the inputs and outputs. The only way to do that is to eventually have figured out with our detective skills what this shape is going to look like. Which means we need lots of points. If we don't know anything about what the function is supposed to look like, if we don't know anything about what the graph is supposed to look like, we need lots of points so that we can piece this information together. When we start to talk about graphs of lines and, and parabolas and all these other graphs, it's because now we, we know something about this kind of function and what shape this graph will eventually take. And then we can find key points and help us draw where all of those points will be. Yeah. If like uh, the dots, because you can do like uh, decimals and stuff like 1.5 there are like dots in the middle too so that you, if you had drawn out there would be an infinite number. Yep. It's weird. No, because it's not like anything is well, it is weird. <laughs> because, because no matter how many points you plot, there will always be room in between to any two points, right? So we have to, like the idea of infinity is, is a weird idea, and we just kind of have to accept it. Okay? Infinity is a big idea. All right. So let's do this again for a slightly diff more difficult function. Okay. Slight, only slight. Okay. Okay. We've talked about fractions. We've added fractions. We multiplied fractions. We divided fractions. If, if it didn't happen already, today is the day. You should not be afraid of fractions. Okay. You should leave it behind. If you see a fraction, have it divided by it. Because you know exactly well, everything that could happen to a fraction. You know how to add fractions. How to multiply them. How to divide them. How to subtract them. So, don't let it freak out. But here's what I want you to think about. Don't just plug in any old thing for x. Choose the easiest thing possible for x. Right? There's, there's, there's an infinite number of things that would, would be easy to plug in for x. Right? So I want you to think, be kind of strategic. Don't just put one in there without thinking about it. Think about what you're going to plug in for x. If you can't think of anything, then go ahead and try it. Just try some random numbers and see which ones wind up being easier than other ones. Okay. And when we're plugging things for x, I would say there's always one thing that's always the easiest to plug in for x. And then we go from there. Or you can zero, zero, yeah. zero. The easiest thing to plug in for x. All right? So work on that for a bit. And uh, if somebody thinks that they've got, like, uh, besides zero, something that's not easier than zero, but pretty easy, OK? Then, uh, Sure, why not? It's absolutely something you could put in for x. But that is it. I mean, when I say easy, I mean it would be really easy to compute this by hand, no calculators necessary. Oh yeah, I can do all of them. One, yeah, not too hard. So let's see what we have to do when we plug in one. Well, we get three fourths. We subtract six. Let's go ahead and do a common denominator of four. That means we have to multiply six by four, which we get twenty-four. So this wasn't all that difficult. It's negative 21 over 4. What about when we go to graph this? Yeah, I mean, we're kind of guessing. We'd like to like 2, negative 5. Like, nice and on the grid, right? Well, I actually didn't do it that way. What I did is I turned 3 fourths into a decimal first. But I just gave you a spiel about fractions. We're not scared of fractions. We use fractions. I would like the outputs into fractions. What? No. 
I'm going to ask for fractions on the test. So you might as well get comfortable with fractions. We're done avoiding fractions. Okay? But if, if there was someone to not have to do fractions, I certainly would like to get around that. Like, yeah, but not just by plugging into my calculator. That's not good. Would 6 be a good one? 6. I think 6 is a little better than 1, because let's see what happens when you put in 6. I'm going to multiply by 6, right? And then I'm going to subtract 6. But what happens when I multiply by 6 up here? It just goes to 0. We get simplified. OK, is 18 over 4? Yes. What about 18? What do you know about 18 and 4? They have a 2 in common. Yeah? So, like, when we go to graph it, we don't have to try to guess where a fourth is. We only have to go with halves. So that's, that's a little better. But still, we wind up with fraction. We have to do 9 halves minus 12 halves equals negative 3 halves. But it's in halves, right? That's like kind of a bigger piece, and it's easier to guess at where a half is as opposed to a quarter. What would be even better than that? What's that? Two. Two would be all right. We would have a, it would have a common factor of two as well, between two and four. Yeah. I feel like it would be three, because of this three? Well, and it's half of the six. This half of six, this six? Uh, well, I mean, it's not that hard, but I bet there's a easier one. Let's see, we've got three fourths times three over one minus six. That gives us nine over four uh, minus six. We still have to find common denominators. So we have nine fourths minus 24 fourths. And so that's negative 15 fourths. It's, not, it's just fractions, right? We're not scared of fractions. But there are numbers that you can plug in that, that make the fractions really kind of a moot point. What about four? What about four? Oh, so easy. What about four? Right, that's the denominator of the fraction we're talking about. So what about four? So y equals three fourths times four over one. What happens when you multiply three fourths by four over one? What's that? Twelve fourths. Twelve fourths simplified. Yeah. Yeah. The three. Yeah. Right. Twelve divided by four is three. Can't you cross cancel? Right, we can talk about cross canceling too. But cross canceling works because, you know, when I multiply through here, I get definitely something 12 that is divisible by 4. Because what? I multiplied by 4. Of course it's going to have a factor of 4, right? So I get 3 minus 6, and 3. <coughs> yeah. um, how would you graph a fraction? That's why fractions aren't the best because, or decimals or anything like that, because we just kind of have to guess. You know, if I have to get graph negative 15 fourths, well, that's a little bit more than uh, three, that's three and three fourths, right? So I'll go to three, and I'll go three quarters of the way, four, and then I'll put a point like that. Right? Yes, 16 and 32. 16 and 32? Well, no, like 16 and then after that. 16, put, put, put in 16, and then after that, do it again, put in 32. Yeah. What do those numbers have in common? They both can be divided by 4. Exactly. There are what you call multiples of 4, mm -hmm. or numbers that have a factor of 4. Yes. So any multiple of 4? Yes. Does that make sense? Any multiple of 4 that I put here is going to cancel out this 4. So now, I don't have to deal with finding common denominators, because the denominator is just not around anymore. Denominator is one, so it's a lot simpler. So, one of the easy things to plug in for x, uh, well, zero, of course, four, eight, 12, 16, negative four, negative eight, negative 12, and four, an infinite number of those. Zero, we get out negative six. Four, we just did. We got negative three. Uh, what do we get when we put in eight? Zero. Negative three. Cancel.
cancel. Two. Three times two is six. Minus six. Oh, oh awesome. Yeah. Okay, Put in 12. Three fourths times 12. Three times three, that's nine. Minus six is three. Boom. Dude, that's cool. Who's <laughs> You following a pattern? What's the next one going to be? Six. Yeah, six. It's going to be six. Six. Nine. Nine. Well, now we're at negative four. Oh. Wait, so. Then it's going to be positive. Hold on. Hold on. It should be negative nine. This one? Negative nine. Yeah, negative nine. And then negative 12. And then negative uh, 15. And if we're going to plot all these, I'm not asking you to back up and get ready. I don't know what's going on. If you need to go help with the thing, then you can go help with the things. Zero, negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, four, three. We jump over in horizontally. We jump over in groups of four, right? Because fours were the easy thing to plug in. Okay. So I'm going to jump over 4 instead of going to 1, 2, or 3. I'm going to go to 4, and that's going to give me a negative 3. I'm going to jump over to 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I get 0. I jump over to 12, and I get out 3. I like it. And now, yes? Can we keep how people go? Keep how people go. Okay. Is this all? I fully understand this. Yes, and then we need to be able to, like the final question on the, on the review, where it was like square, 2x minus 6, I don't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. but then we're going to deal with graphs like that. But the only thing we're going to do is plug in stuff for x, figure out what comes out for y, plot those points, plot enough points until we start to see what all those points are kind of melting into what shapes they're kind of forming. And then we guess at what that where all of those other points, if I were to plot all those infinite number of points, where all of them would be, what shape they would make. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all we're doing. So if I were to plot all of the points, all how many points? Uh, one, two, three, eight. 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 Nine. How many points are all of the points that you could possibly plot? Infinity. 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 What kind of a shape would we start to see? Line. A line. find some inputs and outputs. Okay, we're going to take those inputs and outputs, we're going to turn them into points on a graph, and we're going to get enough points on the graph, those right, points tell us what the input and output is, uh, to start to see if we can tell what shape we would start to make if we were to plot all the infinite number of points. It would be a curve like this, would be a straight line, what would it be? Well, we'll find out by plotting enough points until we get the idea. It should take like... Three or four points, it's not going to take that many. Okay. So go ahead and do this back. If you didn't want to go anywhere, then I would let you keep going. If you know you want to get out there, so you guys are getting the idea. So let's just plug in a, a few things. See what the, uh, where the points are. Talk about it. So let's put in... Uh, Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. That's a good sampling of points. Okay? Zero, easy. Zero, zero, minus one. One, also easy, because you just get one wherever an x is, even if it's to the third or whatever. So we have one here that's negative now, negative one. Plus two, and minus two. So one plus two is three, minus one, minus two. Let's start to write this down. Do some working. Two squared plus two times positive two minus one. Well, two squared is four. There's a negative there, so that's negative. Four. That's four minus one. 
So we have negative 1. Let's do negative 2. That's negative. Negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 minus 1. That's negative 4 still. But this guy's here is negative 4 minus 1. So that's negative 8, negative 9. Negative 1 almost squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 1. This is negative 1 times negative 1. That's positive 1. I'm in negative. Negative 1. Minus 2. Minus 1. We have negative 4. Negative 4. All this stuff. I'm just going to have to wait. Now, we're going to plot those points. Let me talk about... Uh, this point right here, negative one, negative four. Let's talk about that point real quick. Let's see if we're getting this. What does this point, you know, where it is, its coordinates, what does it tell me about the function? Yes? Yeah, it's negative. The function's negative? Uh, that the, those coordinates are negative. Okay, they are negative. We're gonna get real specific though. What exactly does it tell me about the function? I don't want to tell me something general. It's telling me something very specific for a very specific case. That it is negative 1 and negative 4. Yes. What do these numbers tell me about the function? What's the significance of negative 1? What's the significance of negative 4? You don't have it. You don't have it? Like if you have like candy, you don't have anything because <laughs> negative 1. You're okay. okay, you're talking about negative numbers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of what negative numbers mean. But oh, you're dead. Like, what? What do the numbers negative 1 and negative 4 have to do with this function? Well, they put in like, where the, where x is and where y is. And yeah, so put in what? According to this point, you put in. Yeah, negative 4, so I would be put in at x, y. We put it in at x. That's typically yeah. where we put things in. So what did we put in x according to this point? We put in negative 1. It got out negative 4. That's what this point tells us. Nothing more. Nothing more profound than that. You put in negative 1, you got out negative 4. That's exactly right. Excuse the interruption. Paul Watling, please come to the office. Paul Watling to the high school office. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so let's look at these other points. 0, negative 1. Uh, negative, one negative 2, negative 9. Right there. One, two, two, negative one. All right. So now, if we're to draw a curve, not a straight line, it's not going to be straight, right? Clearly not a straight line. If we were to draw a shape, what is the shape? What is it? What is the shape? Not what. Go ahead, Drew. What, what, Curve. It's a curve, and this curve. What is its significance? It's showing that what's it, it made of? Down. What's the curve made of? Numbers. It's a number showing the fluctuation in data. Okay. If there was some data that fit this model, yes. Dots. It's made of dots. It's made of dots. Right? How many dots? Zero. Infinite. An infinite number of dots, and each single dot that is on this graph, and it's really just a part of this graph, each dot tells me if I put this in, I get this out. Put in this, get out for that. All right. So when I draw the thing, all I'm doing is guessing where all of the infinite number of points are supposed to go. And in between these, I think it's pretty clear that the points are going to be somewhere in here. It's got to, the points are going to have to start you know, coming back down. These points are going to have to go through here. Oh, that's cool. All right. What happens after that? Well, I'm not sure, I'll plot some more points. If I know something about this graph, I'll know that once it starts to go down, it'll keep going down on both sides. If it's uh, this kind of function, I know that if, uh, if it looked like they were starting to go up, then they would both go up forever. Okay. Now that's just something that I know in my experience. You don't have that experience, but you will. The point here is that, you get, that a graph is just an infinite number of points. And when you draw that line, that's all you're drawing. You're guessing at all of those infinite number of points. All right? All right. Let's call.
call it good, and let's get out there wherever that is.